right, so we are getting ready for our first ever long electric road trip. Um, we have never done anything close to this length. Um, but we're excited about it and we're pretty confident it can be done with no issues, knock on wood. Um, but we think uh, we think this vehicle can handle it. Uh, we're, we've got a good bit over 200 miles range and I don't think there's more than about 150 miles in between our charging stops. Um, and we'll be stopping at uh, FS chargers. And while we're charging, we'll change the baby, walk the dogs, eat some snacks, and make the best of it. And uh, we're looking forward to it. First things first, we've got to pack this thing up. Fortunately, we've got a, not a ton, but a good bit of cargo area. So pretty cool feature. Um, as long as you've got the key in your pocket, you can uh, just give a little kick under there. And the back hatch opens up, which is really handy if you've got groceries in one arm and a baby in the other. Um, the dogs are going to go back here, and it's a good bit of room. Um, definitely enough for them. They won't be back here for a real long time, just at most a couple hours in between stops. Um, and they'll just curl up and go to sleep. Uh, so I can't quite recall what the exact uh, cubic feet is on this, but it's twice, twice what the Renegade had. Um, so there's a nice flat solid floor here, but you can lift it up and actually take this part out and there's another few inches. Um, we may put the baby's mattress if it'll fit. We think it might put the baby's mattress under there and uh, it's got a few other nooks and crannies, put some dog stuff down in there, um, but they should have enough room. Oh, they'll definitely have enough room for their beds and they'll just uh, snooze the whole way down there. So let's get this thing loaded up. So Hannah reminded me, there's actually more storage that I forgot to mention. So we got the main flat floor right here, open that up. And then underneath that, another one. I think there's an, there's an air compressor down in there and a bag of emergency diapers. Um, it's decent sized. We could put some dog stuff down there. The diapers uh, don't come with the car. <laughs> yeah, the diapers did not come with the car. All right, yeah. A good bit of storage. We'll get this thing loaded up and ready to go. All right, so here's the dog setup. This thing is a really tough, I keep calling it uh, canvas. It's almost like a mix between canvas and heavy duty nylon. Um, really tough uh, dog carrier. You can strap it to headrest and kind of sling it down over. I think most people would usually use it over their back seats. We've got it in the, the far back uh, cargo area. Um, where did we get it from, Amazon? PetSmart. Oh, PetSmart. Never mind. Yeah, PetSmart has these things. Um, really tough, really durable. We're just, we're trying hard to keep this car clean. Um, and then as another layer, uh, we've got a sheet. This is just an old bed sheet um, to protect the sides. Our dogs shed like crazy, in particular Gizmo, the little white uh, English bulldog, just sheds like crazy and his, his fur just like bonds to whatever it touches and you can't, it, oh my God, a nuclear powered a vacuum couldn't get it off of stuff. So we're really trying hard to not let this car turn into what the Jeep turned into, which was just really gross. Um, we love our dogs. We love taking them everywhere with us, but my goodness, it's a tough battle uh, keeping cars clean. So definitely recommend this thing from PetSmart. Nice and tough to keep it clean. We went the extra mile and hung up uh, a sheet underneath it to protect the sides. And we'll throw their beds in there and we'll be good Boys, to go. Boys, we're in the car ready to go. All right. And here comes a baby. <laughs> yeah. Here comes a baby. All right. Here we go. Just hit our little button. You guys watch your little tails. Oh, they got a nice setup in there. Yeah, they got plenty of room. All right. Yeah. Oh, they've got tons of room. Yeah. All right. Emma, are you excited to drive down to North Carolina? You got your little toys, your Squishmallow, your Maximilian, your little Caterpillar. You excited? Yes! What fun! Road trip! Uh, we normally only charge up to 80%. Um, that helps save the battery life, but we charge up to 90%. Um, so we definitely have some miles. We've got 227. Um, I think it is only about 130 something to our first charging stop. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, Emma's ready to go. <laughs> She's excited. And why shouldn't she be? This will be fun. Let's go.
our first charging stop with 79 miles left. So it did pretty good. It's at a, uh, at a Wawa. So we can run in and get <laughs> snacks. Yeah. You having fun back there, baby? Yeah, it did good. It, uh, it was 135 miles. We burned about 140 something miles of range, which is expected. Um, you burn a little bit more range on the highway versus stop and go. Uh, this baby needs to get out, so. All right, charging stop number one. Welcome, Scotty. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. We're at Electrify America. We're gonna be doing Electrify America the whole way down there. Um, we really only need to do three stops. We're gonna do four, we'll top off. We'll do a last fourth uh, top off, but from New Jersey to North Carolina, I really only need uh, three stops. And like I said, we're at a, at a Wawa. We can go in there and get uh, get snacks and drinks. A couple other cars here. Pretty sweet looking Mach-E. This is a Ford Mach-E and a uh, blue ID4 there on the far end. I always like seeing uh, what other EVs are at the stations. All right, we've got to get the dogs out and the baby out. like your little nest back here you got both your beds a good bit of room they seem comfy i see a baby i see emma <laughs> yeah all right i think we're about to get moving all right i think we're ready to keep moving 12:47 to almost fill up all the way not bad better than the uh 40 something dollars that have been in the jeep all right we've got driver assist on which it's basically autopilot. Um, it's it's going to keep you in your lane. It'll speed up, slow down, take curves. Um, it won't change lanes for you, but if you're on a highway like this on I-95, it's self-driving. Um, we've been using it for about 80% of the trip, probably more. I've got a hand on the wheel. Um, it's, it's really advanced. The screen here shows it can recognize trucks around you, knows if it's a car, knows if it's a semi, knows how far ahead the uh, the truck in front of me is, um, and I can set the distance. I can set the distance for how close or far I want to follow. Um, I've got it set at about medium right now. Um, I don't want to be right on somebody's tail, but also don't want to be lagging way behind. I want to keep up with the flow of traffic. Uh, but this is really, really handy. Um, first of all, it feels very safe. It feels very advanced. Um, I feel really comfortable with it. I've used Tesla's full self-driving and this is not quite as advanced just because it can't recognize as many little details and stuff. Um, but it knows the lane. It knows if it's a solid line or a dotted line. Um, it knows if it's a passing lane or not. Um, it knows a lot. And uh, like I said, it, it recognizes and renders the uh, cars and trucks on this screen here. And it's not only safe, uh, it's very handy. Uh, if I need to open up my, uh, my drink or, you know, grab a handful of snacks, um, I can do that. Of course, keeping a hand on the wheel, you know, we're being safe here. Keep a hand on the wheel, eyes on the road, but, uh, it's, it's just, it's so, it's so handy and it makes, uh, driving down the highway traffic just so stress-free. It's really incredible. Um, again, I've got my eyes on the road right now, hand on the wheel, just sort of have the phone propped up here. Uh, but the car is driving itself right now. It's taking these turns. It's recognizing the trucks around us. Um, and with a long highway drive like this, going from New Jersey down to North Carolina, it's so nice to have this feature. And I'll say anybody who's against self-driving just hasn't experienced it yet. I 100% believe that. If you use it, you're like, my God, how are we not all using this? Obviously the technology has to be developed and it's in its early stages, but once you use it, you're gonna pull for every car to have this technology and you're gonna pull for it to be developed to be as, as advanced as possible. It's so nice. It's like having a chauffeur. Uh, being able to unwrap your hamburger or uh, grab a handful of Cheetos or whatever um, and, and not pose any danger to yourself or those around you is really nice. Again, it's a safety feature first and foremost, um, but it's also a huge convenience. Um, yeah, so just had to show this off a little bit. It's really impressive. Um, 
Tesla's the top dog in self-driving, objectively, you know, I don't care what you think about them, they have the most advanced self-driving technology. Um, if you don't believe me, go on Turo, rent one, give it a try, it's insane. Um, but the other guys are doing good. The, these software engineers at Volkswagen, they're doing a good job. Um, they, you know, for just cruising down the highway, this is really, really good. All right, well, we're gonna keep on moving. Stop number two, rolled in with 111 miles, so not an urgent need, but we just, we'll just top off for a little bit and keep moving. Another Electrify America. I think all of our stops are Electrify America. And this one is at a mall. Bass Pro Shops over there. And Hannah has run in to check out a couple things in the mall. I'm here, juicing up, gonna feed the baby. Yeah, it's humming along. Stop number two. Up to 36 kilowatts. Not real fast, but it'll probably ramp up faster than that. We don't really need it to go blazing though. Yeah, so it should be a fairly quick stop. Anybody wanting to kill some time during their charging stops here? We got a Lego store. All right. All right, we're juiced up. It was only $10.32. Yeah, about a quarter of what, what we'd have done to uh, fill up the Jeep. So let's unplug and hit the road. Stop number three. Um, this one, nice, nice spot, a ton of stalls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So actually 16, because each of them has two. Um, there's a Walmart over, Walmart over here, which I'm about to visit to get a couple things. Uh, I'm gonna change the baby. And we're gonna get juiced up. Yeah, some green space if we want to walk the dogs. Oh yeah, this one's fast. All right, not all of them are the same speed. Nice, the last one we visited was like 35 kilowatts, um, which is pretty slow. That's fine, we had to eat lunch and do some stuff. Uh, but man, 123, nice. That's that's peak speeds for this vehicle. There's others, Teslas and Ionic 5s, other EVs that can go way faster than that. But man, that's blazing for this one. I love it, all right. All right, so I think we're gonna switch drivers. Um, I've been doing most of the driving. Uh, Emma, you got it from here? These things are pretty advanced, but they're not that advanced. They're not, they're not baby mode. <laughs> Look at you! Yay, driving! Emma is driving! Yay! What fun! Yeah. Our car doesn't sound like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Put on daddy's hat. All right. Yeah, I guess we probably shouldn't let you drive just yet. <laughs> All right. So one more point about this uh, charger station setup is sort of counterintuitively, you wouldn't think this, I love that it's tucked away way back here in a corner. So there's the Walmart down there big sea of a parking lot in between us um the reason for that is when they're 
right up front near the front door, which is the way they used to always be designed in the early days of installing charger stations, they always put these things front and center, you know, to encourage more EV drivers. Uh, but that kind of backfired. Um, not re not really backfired, but first of all, it did two things. First of all, it made non-EV drivers sort of resent the EV drivers. Like, why do they get special treatment? Um, yeah, I kind of get that. Like, I'm not asking for any special treatment. Um, I just want a charger. It doesn't have to be front and center. So it did that, sort of got people a little angry against EV drivers like they're getting special treatment. But also, because they're front and center, uh, gas car drivers that were lazy were parking in the spots, blocking the chargers, just because they lazily just wanted to park up front and they didn't care that there was a charger there. Um, there was a station out near Auburn, uh, near Seattle, that I used a lot that was front and center at a Walmart. And um, God, there's always somebody blocking the spots. Uh, so I love it. We pulled into this parking lot and I said to Hannah, I said, oh yes, it's way back in the corner. Spots will be open. Uh, and yeah, sure enough, got a bunch of uh, bunch of free chargers here. There's a Maki down there, white Maki, it's pretty sweet. All right, baby, you gonna drive us out of here? Yes, daddy, let's go. All right, stop number three, I think is about done, up to 87%. This is definitely the most we've spent so far. Um, 17 bucks, again, way less than uh, filling up a, a tank of gas. And we rolled in here with not a whole lot of juice left. So this is a pretty full fill up. Um, we could get to our destination in New Bern without another stop, but we're gonna stop in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina for one last stop just to top off and make sure we roll into town with uh, a good bit of electrons. So we're going to unplug and hit the road for stop number four, or early 3.5 we'll call it, and then it's on to New Bern. All right, we haven't gotten to Rocky Mount yet for our last charging stop. Um, we wanted to stop at this Popeyes over here and Hannah pointed out, there's a little dog park right here. This is a great amenity and I think it's run by, yeah, this uh, convenience store right here. There's an Exxon and then a convenience store and I think these guys have put in the dog park. This is great. Yeah, this is awesome. The poor dogs, you know, they've been stuck in the back all day. We've gotten them out to walk them around a little bit, but, uh, you know, they're pretty cooped up back there. So this is wonderful. Of course, Gizmo, always a sucker for a fire hydrant. He loves a fire hydrant. In fact, his little name tag on his collar is fire hydrant shape. There's Mama and Baby. There's Barley. So we'll give them about five minutes to sniff around and shut your legs, and then we're going to get chicken. All right, last stop. Just topping off here in Rocky Mount. This one's going pretty fast. 99 kilowatts. Yeah, that'll juice it up pretty quick. Yeah, last stop. We'll just top off here. Pretty good spot. There's a car wash over here. We're gonna run through that after we're done because we've got bugs all over the car and it's a little dirty get it nice and clean and there's a sheets and there's a porsche tycon over here that's pretty sweet fully electric porsche i'm seeing more and more of those they're pretty awesome yeah pretty nice spot and there's mommy <laughs> yeah so we're gonna juice up and get a car wash and be on our way. Yeah, look at that bad boy. All right, we made it last night. Um, we came in like a whirlwind, uh, so I didn't get any video of our final stop here at the house. Um, but it was a it was a great trip. Pretty easy. Went about uh, as good as we expected, and I was expecting it to go pretty well. Um, oh, there's the dogs, and there's Gizmo. And there's Hannah and her mom and Barley and Shrimp out there going for a little walk. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. Um, but we got here last night and they had a plug ready for us. We didn't really need to plug in, but it's nice just to get it back to full. Um, so we just popped the plug into the wall, plugged it in, and we're here for a relaxing Mother's Day weekend. There's the pig dog way off in the distance. Gizmo the pig dog. Yeah, so we're glad to be here. I'll probably add some final thoughts. Uh, definitely thought of a few more details I want to share. 
about the car on the way down, but definitely it was a it was a great trip. All right.